Hi, Tom. I'm going to quickly introduce you. For six years, Tom Bland, non binary he day, has been Black Phonics Alchemist Lab resident marketing and relationships manager. In this role, they have built partnerships and collaborations with artists in fields as diverse as literature, film, fine art, comics, drag, pro wrestling, and um, tabletop gaming. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Well, um, like many of you, uh, perfume is part of my everyday life. So I'm basically in the monkey house. Uh, I don't get to have a lot of contact with others who are also in the monkey house. So um, for that part of this experience, I'm most grateful. And I especially want to thank uh, the ESS coordinators for this amazing opportunity. I, you know, I only wish it was in person and hopefully we'll get there one day. So, uh, uh, okay, so my name is Tom Blunt. Uh, as you heard, I'm part of the team here at Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab. We're an LA-based indie perfumer. It's about to celebrate its 18th anniversary. So um, as a person with no virtually no gender to speak of, uh, I'm always curious to see what companies present to the general public um, based on who they assume that includes. Uh, I notice every single time I'm presented with a binary gender option. And you know what? Uh, not all of those options are a bad fit for me. I get by, it's fine. Uh, but to exist outside of the mainstream is basically to make do the best you can with the available options um, if you can't create your own. Um, this also means that I 100% notice when other options are available and when somebody who has something to sell knows how broad the general public actually is. And I know that there are people out there who feel other in all kinds of ways, not just LGBTQ people, and they notice these things too. Um, anyone who's used to being skipped over or included as an afterthought will always notice when suddenly you're provided with an experience that is more expansive than what we can usually count on from the mainstream. Uh, and our allies are increasingly noticing this as well, which is wonderful. Uh, so before we get too deep into talking shop about perfume, um, I just wanted to share for whoever's listening to make sure we have a base level of understanding with everyone. Uh, Cause I know not everybody has the same awareness of gender issues and everybody's working on a different corner of the jigsaw puzzle. So uh, there's an infographic you might have seen passed around on light, online uh, lately, especially during pride month that shows uh, all the various identities that the word uh, transgender serves as an umbrella for. Uh, just a kind of a very basic and concise visualization with the umbrella. And then on one side underneath that, you have the binary trans men and trans women. And then you have the non-binary folks uh, with all sorts of identities, including genderqueer and agender and demi girls and demi boys and every possible variation. So everything under that umbrella. Um, those of you who are cisgender, which I assume is a lot of you, uh, that means your gender more or less aligns with what the doctors said about you when you were born. And as cisgender people, you have your own orientation in society and in your relationships and your whole reality. Um, and while that may be a very common experience, and it's certainly been the dominant one, uh, it's also just one way to be. And as humans keep learning more and more about who and what we really are, um, your authority is more likely to be challenged. Uh, condolences. Uh, <laughs> so, um, but to be trans is to have some other relationship with whatever they decided about you at birth based on the appearance of your genitals. Uh, and that whatever form of trans you are, binary, non-binary, et cetera, um, it's a different orientation to reality, uh, partially informed by being raised in most cases as if you were cisgender. So, um, Many trans people experience dysphoria, which is basically a painful psychological reaction to, way, to the way that their physical traits align with their actual gender, uh, but not all of them do. And lately you see a lot more people also describing a state of gender euphoria, 
which is the joy of feeling at home in whoever you are in whatever stage of transition. Um, if only we could create the conditions that would allow more people to feel that way more often. Uh, that brings us to fragrance. Um, fragrance is a gender affirming experience. That's always been among its uses. Uh, perfume can help you feel more like a woman, like your fantasy of womanhood or your concept of manhood. Uh, and over time, as people noted that there was a broader range in expression possible beyond binary, um, this gave way to unisex. Uh, in a way, it's kind of like perfumers or perfume marketers understood this way before a lot of other people in the mainstream. Um, so, and in addition to being used to affirm gender, perfume can also be used by people to explore gender identity. Um, fragrance helps you build up a sensory vocabulary for what you aspire to be, what you want to embody. And this, this is for everyone. Um, a big eye-opening moment early in my work in the, at the lab was a trans customer who explained to me how our sense had helped her at a really early phase in her transition and coming out because trying on feminine fragrances served as a very small, safe, low commitment way to access that fantasy and to embody these qualities. And it ultimately influenced her to her decision to transition. So, uh, but as time wears on, uh, it turns out that unisex is not a great term. I know it's falling out of fashion. Uh, it, it conflates gender with sex, uh, which are totally different things. It almost kind of says sex doesn't matter without addressing any of the nuance or the amazing variety of expressions or gender uh, presentations. And so, and remember non-binary does not necessarily equal androgynous. So unisex may sound all encompassing, but it still focuses on sex in a way that says something that you as an artist might not really mean to say. Um, I know uh, for many perfume wearers, sex and sexuality are really not part of what they're looking for at all. So, um, and I know that some perfumers are starting to branch out a bit and describe their products as gender neutral or gender free. And again, this is a, a welcoming gesture and that is the perfect term to describe certain scent inspirations. Uh, but when applied loosely, there's still kind of a, a dodge of the question of who's out there listening uh, and receiving the message. And it kind of flattens out expectations of who might be doing what with their gender and what forms of expression that they might crave. Uh, we can't make all fragrances gender free because then how does one access gender euphoria with a gender free fragrance? Uh, so first of all, uh, real talk on the sales side Often, this is purely about broadening the amount of people that you can market your products to. It's, you know, it's easy. Uh, and that way, you, all you have to really change is the way that you describe your product. Um, just as there's a lot of money to be made in easing cisgender folks' anxieties about their gender with his and hers products, there's also lots of money to be made in erasing those distinctions altogether and just let it be in the eye of the beholder. Um, but since no perfume is truly for everyone, we shouldn't have to set neutrality as the goal. Uh, and at the lab, uh, I mean, our affliction, our habit, our pattern is to just make a wider range of products altogether. So there's something out there for virtually anyone. Um, so the thesis kind of for the talk that I wanted to bring is basically, in a nutshell, um, perfume is a medium that historically explores gender fantasy and sexual fantasy uh, in ways that sometimes overlap and often push boundaries. And our presentation of these products should have the language to back this up and also the full palette of human experiences to paint from. So the first thing that I would like to say to all perfumers uh, listening in anywhere, whoever you are, um, the world needs all expressions of gender. Uh, even yours. Uh, don't shy away from putting yourself in your work. Your sensitivities, your memories, your sexuality, your interpretations of art and literature, etc. This is your perfume. And don't feel pressured to constrict your fantasy into unisex packaging because we, we need your gender euphoria 
just as much as we also need you to recognize the limits of your perceptions and the, the difference between how you experience things and how others might experience it. Um, a lot of cisgender people have experienced gender euphoria and affirmation from a young age and not everyone gets to have that experience. So that means that you have access to a particular feeling or fantasy that someone else wants. Your fantasy of femininity lived as a cisgender woman or your fantasy of masculinity lived as a cisgender man um, or your fantasies of each other. Uh, these could serve as someone else's portal to accessing those same feelings in their own original way, either easing their dysphoria or maybe even just exploring how other people experience reality. Because uh, I know a lot of cisgender men who are very secure in their own identity and they also enjoy these fragrances as well. Um, and I should add that a lot of cisgender people have also experienced gender dysphoria throughout their whole lives. And I'm just here to say to anyone who needs to hear it that it's possible that you might not be as cisgender as you always assumed. Um, but anyway, the, the purest artistic expression is always going to be grounded in someone's personal lived experiences or their fantasies. And that's why we're counting on perfume artists to be experimental. The market in these areas is not being adequately tapped or surveyed. Um, research often excludes LGBTQ people. The focus ends up being on heteronormative fantasies. And that, that can include queer or unisex fads, um, but, you, but there's not a lot of looking beyond that. Um, so uh, I, one major piece of advice is that's really important actually is to simply not present your fantasies in a way that references anatomy or some kind of essential experience that is unattainable to people of different genders. I actually, um, I wrote to a men's underwear company recently about this because they had this, uh, in their ads, they had this bulge enhancing design. It's kind of like a push-up bra for the junk. Uh, and they described it in their uh, ads as a man-shaped pouch. And uh, I know they're not actively courting trans men and non-binary customers, but it still seemed like they were making a statement about what makes a man that they might not actually mean if they thought about it like just a little harder. And to their credit, I, they were very receptive to my questions uh, when I wrote about it, um, just to have a talk. So um, if everyone is still with me about pushing beyond unisex, I, <laughs> I wanted to talk about um, non-binary gender euphoria which could include literally any traditionally gendered components or a combination of them or something totally new. Um, but what would that be? And that's kind of what we're waiting to find out. What does it smell like to be gender fluid, to move back and forth between different concepts of self? I know people in this category uh, often end up collecting an entire calliope of different scents. Um, that's me too to accommodate whatever you're vibing with at the moment, you can have it at arm's reach and you can mix and blend things. Um, but people are creating this, they're doing this work for themselves and creating this fantasy out of whatever's available and they're spending a lot of money on it. Um, I think the way to make, to stay most sure-footed in experimenting with these scentscapes is uh, to collaborate with people who expe experience gender identity differently than you do. Um, that way you're not just fantasizing about someone else's reality or speaking for them or fetishizing them. And then they, as an artistic collaborator, can stand by whatever the end result is as an expression of their identity. Um, it really isn't that difficult to build these inroads, even though I know a lot of these creative conversations can be quite challenging, uh, maybe daunting to people if, when you're discussing things that are outside of your comfort, you know, or your normal reality. But as queer non-binary people, we know that we have something that you want. Our queerness, uh, our imagination, fantasies that are exotic to cisgender culture, we would be thrilled to help people access them and to normalize this kind of experimentation for everyone. Uh, and of course, to be compensated for our work for a change instead of just being referenced as a source of inspiration and then profited from. So, uh, here, here are just a few examples before I finish up about what uh, BPAL has done, Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab. Uh, one thing that we've done is collaborate with 
a lot of non gender non-conforming people, uh, like I just mentioned. Uh, particularly, we did a bunch of perfumes with um, drag queens from RuPaul's Drag Race and the Boulay Brothers Dragula, uh, resulting, I have to say, in products that we would never normally have thought to offer. Uh, it's been really fun. And I'm very proud to have actually had a hand in this, kind of working as an intermediary between the perfumer and the partner. Um, so that everyone is talking the same language and, and getting on you know, the same vibe. Um, another thing that we've done that I would encourage others to do is don't be afraid to edit your past work. Um, we've gone back through our catalog to remove you know, certain unnecessarily gendered language and bits of text that kind of no longer align with our values or culture or what we now know. Um, we're always trying to demonstrate an awareness of feminism and trans issues rape culture, everything we can to just help create a more inclusive picture altogether of romance and gender and sexuality, et cetera. Um, this means that, for example, um, when we released a line of beard oils last year, I think, uh, we kept all of the language gender, gender neutral and we're working on an entire range of smells for beard oils beyond the traditional rugged types that you would expect to find in the market. These products are for all people. It is literally none of our business whose face the beard may be growing on. Some people have beards, some people don't have beards. Some of those people want to smell like cookies instead of you know, a pine tree. Uh, the same goes for products that we created for charity drives where we were gathering tampons and pads for needy people here in LA. You know, uh, doing so, we can help guide public perception away from considering these to be women's products or a women's issues. And that way, we avoid alienating a lot of the exact same people that we're trying to help. So uh, another thing that we have done in this vein is in our, we have a series of perfumes for role-playing games, for Dungeons and Dragons style games. And we had our label artists create three different label art options for each product. So it means that when you're gaming, whether your character is a man or a woman or some variation of non-binary, you can have a perfume bottle that somewhat reflects that choice, even though the scent is completely the same. Um, and because I work with the best people in the world, uh, I was able to make a case for non-binary being the default option on the drop-down menu when you go to select one, uh, because why not? Um, and then the last thing that I would say is to truly just be receptive to questions and critiques of your products you cannot do everything for everybody, um, but you can listen and you can think about it and decide what kind of world that you want to participate in and help lend your creative strength to. Um, that's, you know, as anyone of any gender working in perfume, um, your voice contributes to the whole wider picture. Um, and obviously I would love to jabber about this forever, um, but I know this is an ongoing conversation and I'm happy to resume it with others later on. Um, I welcome people to reach out to me privately with questions. You can reach me at tom at blackphoenixalchemylab.com. Um, I'm on the social medias. Uh, so I would love to hear from other people and how they are exploring all of these issues in their work. So, and I, with that, I yield my time. Thank you, Tom. Um, energizing and, and fascinating uh, talk and timely and important. Um, Margaret says, if I may request that, so I'd love to see this topic presented with a longer time slot in the future. Thank you for hosting and thanks to Tom for the time, thought and energy. Margaret, I agree. There's quite a few topics that warrant a lot of time and this is up there on the top of the list. So we'll work on that. There's a lot of compliments, Tom, well done. I think energy means I talked really fast. You know what? I do that all the time. Okay, Dorothy says, please give examples of the sense that you believe are examples of the values you speak of, um, if you have any. Um, well, what, one interesting thing, oh, I have it right here, um, not planned. Um, <laughs> we did a partnership with a pro wrestler whose name is Effie. He's a queer, uh, queer man who is a really, really popular indie professional wrestler. And we, he wanted to make a perfume with us and call it Daddy. Um, but his whole thing is that uh, is confounding these gender expectations. And we work together on copy 
for the scent. First of all, on a scent that anyone could wear, which was very much something that he wanted. Not everyone might like it, but anyone would feel included. And we wrote this wonderful product copy for it about how basically daddy was kind of a gender identity in its own right. You know, like um, there are everyone, everyone can be a daddy, you know, like there are man daddies and woman daddies. And it just kind of to like to blur the expectation in a way that welcomes anyone to embody the kind of swagger that is part of his character. Because the character and the persona of the wrestler was really what we were trying to convey. Not so much like, you know, the the reality of his, you know, physical sex. And we also released it as a beard oil. <laughs> nice. I hope that answered your, your uh, question, Dorothy. Um, we have some virtual vigorous applause. I like vigorous applause, not just applause. <laughs> no, that, that's like not vigorous applause. This is vigorous applause. It's more work than I've done all day. <laughs> it's more work Micah than I've done all day. question. Go ahead, um, Micah's question is, is gender neutral a good term to use? I am understanding that that is also limiting. Um, when I think of gender neutral fragrances, I think of some of the stuff that we've made that's kind of grounded in nature, which I know is a very common fantasy to evoke and something that a lot of perfumers get started in because it's accessible and it's something that they know people will understand. Um, and uh, gender neutral is a great way of describing that product, I think. Um, I, you know, I just don't want people to feel like they have to release a product that's gender neutral as a way to demonstrate awareness of gender issues. Um, because then, you know, that, I just don't think that that's a meaningful thing to say about literally every fragrance um, or that we have to, you know, aspire to, to that. So if your fragrance isn't gender neutral, that's fine. You're not excluding anyone. You'll probably make more fragrances, you know? Um, it's just, uh, it's kind of a way of imagining who's out there and, who, you know, who might want it and making sure that they feel welcome. And, and we honestly do a lot of this work to include cisgender men in fragrance. I have to do a lot of at our live events back when we did them. I had to kind of do a lot of sussing out when a man would ask me for help with a product, what kind of fantasy was he even had in mind or what would be included in that? Because, um, my palette to pick from is very broad and you know and he might not even have the language to explain that but like sometimes all they want to hear is that oh this is unisex this is gender neutral this is for everyone and it's like that makes them feel like they can have it um it's it you know i feel bad for for people with um with those limitations but i recognize that like through perfume a lot of people are surprising themselves and exploring. So just by ending up in a conversation with someone like that, it's an opportunity to maybe get them to try something that they wouldn't normally consider part of, you know, part of their gender expression. Thank you so much. I have a question from Donna that might work as a follow-up, but Donna, I'd love to unmute you so you can ask the question yourself. Hi, um, well, it was just related to exactly what you were talking about, would non-binary be another term? Because scent can be whatever it wants to be, right? And everything doesn't have to be classified anymore. And as a perfumer myself, I don't create a scent from a place of, oh, this is for a man or for a woman, unless, I'm, unless the brief makes me, right? So mm -hmm. does it, is non-binary better or worse or the same? Um, it's, it's, I'll admit it's tricky because non-binary is an identity and there are people, when you say that the, perf we don't, we're exploring together and we often end up in areas that there's no firm consensus on and non-binary gender is a big one of those because so many people are expressing it differently and for some people like non-binary is an identity that they, they stand with really firmly. Other people who are non-binary might describe themselves as genderqueer one day or some other way. Um, if you make a product and you describe the product as non-binary, um, people are going to, uh, some people will have the expectation that you are specifically um, marketing a scent for non-binary people. So it's as a description of a product instead of a person, it, it ends up getting kind of murky about what the intention might be or who's making it. You know what I'm saying? Um, like, this is why I think, uh, this is why people dodge, dodge it altogether. It's so much easier. 
Uh, and you especially, of course, don't want to hurt anybody's feelings or make anyone feel like you're trying to like, you know, claim an identity as part of like a, you know, like a product. Um, but, you know, if, if I, and I honestly, I have my own blind spots. I'm so busy working on the stuff that we're doing that I don't get to always see who's out there and what they're creating and how they're talking about it. So I would love to see examples if someone is describing a scent as non-binary or, you know, maybe broaden it a little and use a description that says something like that this perfume, you know, is meant to exist, you know, outside of the gender binary. Like that's a way of at least ex ex describing the structure instead of referencing like specific people. Thank you. Um, Very helpful. Yeah, great. Thank you, Tom. In the Middle East, like the men harvest distill and wear dantena rose with a smoked facet. So I see that in other cultures, gender euphoria may vary and rose may not be exclusive to women. Perhaps gender euphoria can vary with different cultures and that mm -hmm. women may wear strong masculine scents to feel more womanly and men may wear like soft roses to feel more manly. I know it's kind of complex. Oh no, you're singing my song. Uh, this is, um, as the more exposure we have to different people and different products and um, and hear other, you know, customer experiences, the more we start to see how these definitions break down. Um, the words that were used in this art form and in this industry for a long time really reflected the society people were trying to build. It turns out that those concepts of gender just are not based on much. Um, and yeah, I really love um, encountering different fantasies of masculinity that include other elements. As a queer person, I think these are really fun ways to kind of subvert gender expectations within my own culture, you know, like to reach for something that I know is an expression of masculinity somewhere but would not be considered that way here um, unlocks a whole different experience. So I, I, I love that. Um, we definitely, we do some of that at the lab th by recreating more historical style recipes like Victorian men's colognes and such that really um, are indistinguishable from a woman's fragrance by today's standards. Um, and so we get a lot of questions about that. And it's like, oh, but is this for men? And it's like, well, yeah, circa like 130 years ago. But <laughs> where are you in time? Where are you in the world? Um, I love getting to pose those kinds of questions. And then just people end up going where they feel at home. And I do know, I'm sure there are a lot of men who are not as cisgender as they maybe believe they are, or not as heterosexual as they believe they are, who find their way through life and to these realizations by drifting into these areas that are, that are a step outside of what normally is available to them. Thank you so much. Of course. Um, okay, I think, uh, I think this does warrant a larger conversation, obviously, uh, and we'll do our very best to help make space for that or, or support people who do. Mm -hmm. So um, certainly, uh, I think we should revisit this uh, in a larger format. But uh, Tom, I want to you know thank you for for your time. I've been a fan of Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab since before I started the institute, like 2010 or something, 2009, and I, I nerded out, came to some of your events many years ago. So I'm, I'm very happy to finally connect with you guys. You know? Oh yeah, I I hope to meet someday. It was really yeah cool. yeah one day when we can meet again. I think I shared this with you as an email before, but um, BPAL and Tom's work was some of the first work that I sort of understood as um, this experiment with fragrance and play. In the online sci-fi community, people would share amp switcher BPAL decants and then really talk about their exploration of scents that they wouldn't necessarily choose for themselves and how they began to understand their preferences through that. And that was just a really important sort of nascent scent community to uh, participate in as a lurker. And I really want to thank you for that. Oh, thank you. I love that's my story kind of of how I ended up with the lab too. So I really appreciate hearing that. Cool. Well, thank you, Tom. Thank you for your time. Oh, thank you so much. And thank you everybody. And I'm reading the comments and stuff here too. And it's, it's great. I would love to you know, answer all if I can. <laughs>